live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for VMworld 2016. We're here at the Mandalay Bay in the hang space at VMworld. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Yen Bang Lee, who's the um, GM and SVP of the Storage and Availability Division. Did I get that right? Is that right? Welcome, that welcome good. back. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Stu. Great to be back here again. You know, I was here just yesterday, so to make this a little bit more fun, I actually have a surprise guest. You know, sitting next to me, uh, our principal architect, Ronison Rivera. You know, he is one of our technologists that's most loved by our customers. So I think he's going to make this segment great. I try to crash all the parties I can, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to theCUBE, thanks. thanks for coming on. First of all, let's just get it out of the way. What's going on with the big party tonight? Well, we, we do this little shindig, which has become the best party of VMworld every year, ever since we launched vSAN, the greatest thing ever created, period. Um, and it's pretty good. So you guys are more than welcome and invited to make it to the party, please so join us. It's the talk of the town, so get that out of it. So what's new? I mean, you guys had a crushing keynote out there today, a lot of great positive uh, vibes and comments on Twitter. I see Stu knows very much about vSAN, <laughs> wrote the seminal work on, on the paper, he writes and the research, but yeah. it really is becoming the real uh, you know, kernel of the innovation engine around a lot of different parts. Can you break that down? Let's spend a minute to talk about what's so important about vSAN in, in particular and how it brings everything together. Well, sure, so one of the things that vSAN does today is that it's, it's just a, a key component of the software-defined data center and it ties everything together now because everything has to be stored somewhere. Right? So when you have a suitable, reliable, and performing, that everything delivers everything that you want from every aspect that is part of that stack in software, it doesn't get any better than that. So now we enable that true vision completely in that aspect. And that's why vSAN is so big. And the way it's architected and where it lives is something that's pretty important. Yeah. So Yenbing, maybe you could explain vSAN, every, almost every announcement I've heard this week, when yeah. you dig down into the components, it was mm -hmm. like, oh, what's in Cloud Foundation? Oh, yeah, vSAN's yes. in there. You know, how, how's it working with NXX? Um, you know, vSAN is, it seems to be just a core fundamental piece of what's going on here. Can you talk right. about the, the strategic importance of it? Absolutely. I think if you think about what vSphere, you know, how that transformed compute, uh, you know, vSAN is doing the same to storage. And if you think about the relationship of vSAN and vSphere, so if you have a virtualized environment, you know, vSAN is really becoming that very foundational layer of your modern virtualized infrastructure. So, so the tight coupling of vSphere, vSAN, providing the most basic building block and converging your storage and compute together. So I, I think it's, a, it's becoming the foundational element and fueling all these other innovations that we're going into, whether it's extending it to a much fuller uh, cloud foundation, the whole SDDC stack with smart lifecycle management, or the cross-cloud architecture. What I've been saying is everything, whether it's private, public cloud, today's application, tomorrow's application, powered by vSAN. Yeah. So Rawlinson, I've seen you throw down some epic demos uh, in, in the past. Uh, you know, I was a little disappointed I didn't get to see, on, uh, see you up on stage for a keynote this morning. <laughs> so sh show us what you've been working on uh, to tell us, you know, is it face melting? Is it awesome sauce? Absolutely. So the keynote that Yan Bing delivered this morning was pretty awesome. And then the demo there. So we, you know, tied into the whole story that we're trying to position, obviously, as, as of today, and with a couple of items that were tech preview. What we showcase in this demo is achievable today, for the most part, right? Some of the items that are not there are some of the things that we tech preview, but being able to go across clouds, from a private cloud to a, to a public cloud, by changing a policy, and if you remember, vSAN was the, the, the solution, the technology that introduced this policy-based management framework that allows us to have the better life cycle of the infrastructure in that case. And those are some of the things that we showcase in that demo, which are, they're amazing. I mean, if you think about the amount of work, the effort that it takes to do that, Right? In terms of just trying to do, achieve that, it's several clicks, there's a lot of risk and some of these things that have to be done. And then on top of that, very quickly we transfer, I mean truly transfer, this was not a replicate this or that, this was a storage, a, a next v motion as we call it, across a, public, a private cloud and a public cloud. And what makes that possible is the cloud foundation. The stack of products and features and technology that are, that are there, it's what makes it possible. We are the only company that can do this today, and that's all because of the way all of our components 
including with vSAN tied together, specifically on the network side with vSAN and NSX. Yeah, so... So, Stu, we'll, can I yeah, inject yeah, one comment here? Sure. Uh, the real reason why Rollinson was, uh, uh, was not on stage is actually the following. You know, he just made it ridiculously simple for me to do. <laughs> and I only needed to do two things. You know, set the performance analytics on, and then change the policy. You know, yeah. He just made it too simple. As, as Chad Sackett would say, it's the easy button. <laughs> Basically, to so, be honest. So yeah. what's the big deal? What's the big aha moment in vSAN? And I'm, I'm trying to get to the, the heart of it and, and, and why people are so excited about it. Is it workload mobility? Is it performance with flash? Is it the data, uh, data uh, opening up the data? What is the big um, key issue around why it's so popular, why vSAN is doing so well? Um, if you could narrow you know, the, it. So I think a lot of our customers bought vSAN because of the uh, incredible cost savings they see. This tend to be you know, the, a strong driver for procurement, and everybody is looking to do more with less. But what customers truly fall in love with vSAN is how simplified and how it really brings vSphere and storage together. You know, again, that just speaks to the heart of vSphere admins. So I see that's So simplifying the, the complexity is abstraction? That yeah, simplifying, you're essentially seeing your compute and storage at the same time, you know, you know um, simplifying a lot of the complexity away. And there is also much more unified management on top of it, because it's not just vSphere with vCenter, but there is, you know, vRealize automation. There is vRealize uh, operation. <laughs> you know, all these management capabilities integrated, you know, bringing everything into one integrated stack. So simplicity is what customers fall in love with vSAN for. So a tweet I'll read here, it's interesting. It says, uh, VMware is creating great gravity around vSphere. NSX, vSAN, vRealize, Workspace ONE, great individual products, but all great together. Is that kind of the, the <laughs> sentiment that people are feeling around it, all of them working together, well, but it, yet individually good, I mean, great, yeah. I mean. Well, we definitely want to build individually differentiated product, but more importantly, bring them together. If you think about this morning's demo, um, I was doing a vSense segment, but what I demoed is cloud foundation working in your private data center, working in your public data center, and connected together. So Rollinson is going to his session yep. at three o'clock. Yep. So I have a session basically going around that. And the deal is this, vSun is an essential key pillar component of that stack, but it's about how well we integrate with the rest of the stack, but integration doesn't necessarily mean dependencies on one another, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because the way we can cooperate and deal with NSX and vSun, the values that are there, those products within themselves stand on their own, but together they become much more powerful. In the whole stack. Is That's the know, key. Rich that seems right. to be the key. Correct. Yeah. The key value proposition. Correct. Correct. And, and I think even you know, as we all want to win the hyperconverged marketplace, I do think from a competition point of view, it's really hard to compete on just basic set of product mm -hmm. functionality. You know, you win one round. You know, your competitor win the next round. I think for VMR, I really see the power is how we bring the entire stack together and how we put it in the context of a cross cloud. And I do think. What we've demonstrated today on stage, only VMware can do that. It's a fact. Only we can do it. All so right. cross cloud is coming. With Pat's going to come on at three. We're going to we're going to yeah. drill him on that one. But this seems to be enabling that. But mm -hmm. yep, some people were saying five years as Pat laid out for cross cloud. It's kind of been out, way out there. We've only been doing the queue for seven years. It seems like <laughs> everything's changing. Steve Harris a VC. Yeah. Chad's <laughs> the president of a division. Yeah. You know, yeah. things are really moving fast. So. Timing is critical, so can you share your thoughts on what's shipping and where it's, what's going to uh, be in market, kind of where the headroom is, and, and set the expectation for customers that are, that are really excited by this? Okay, maybe let me start with uh, vSAN. So, like Rollinson said, most of the capabilities we demonstrated today are already available. Uh, there are a couple pieces of tech preview, the vSAN performance analytics, that's a tech preview. Um, and it's coming soon. Unfortunately, we are not yet at a place to, to be able to give specific timeline. Encryption, we are already announcing the beta of that feature. Again, indicating it's really around uh, the corner. You know, but the other capabilities are available today. Um, and if you look at the broader umbrella services of you know, cross-cloud services that Guido showcased yesterday, they're all in tech preview, and we will definitely yep. be sharing the availability time um, with our customers through. So 
Rawlinson, you, you talked about how VMware, you think you've got the best stack out there. I know you also spent a lot of time with your storage partners out there. I mean, many of us spent you know, more than the last decade. Uh, yeah. there, there's all the, the, the plugins and you know, many years working on VVols, which is a, one of the underpinnings of vSAN. Can, can you talk about that relationship about, you know, there's vSAN and then there's, there's all the other storage pieces and some of the great things you're doing with the ecosystem. Yeah, abso absolutely. Yeah. So we, we've done a lot of work in terms of obviously enabling you know, uh, uh, probably the best storage platform for our own technologies within. But we also, within our ecosystem, enable the same sort of capability, so it's not just something we all we hold on our own. Um, so the behavior that we've, de that we've de 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 developed and delivered with vSAN, we've also exposed that to our external partners. Because now the same sort of logic, technology, APIs, and all that stuff is available in the form of virtual volumes. Right, yeah. so they're able to kind of leverage some of the things that we're doing as we evolve the, uh, the ecosystem to kind of get to that point. Yeah. If there's one thing that we have, out of all the things that I've done in storage, you know very well, for the past 20 plus years, storage is storage. The features are the features, there's different implementation, things change in performance improvement, but that's it. What have we done here, what we're trying to introduce in our, in our software-defined storage stack is, if there's one thing that you'd ask me, what is the one differentiator between what we're doing and applies to our core storage stack and all vSAN and virtual volumes, is our policy management framework. No one has that. And that fix is not just, it's not just a feature, we're trying to address an operational inefficiency problem, right? Yeah. This, what you saw today in the demo, was triggered by a policy, not by human carrying you know, a complete action. The system can now tell you, based on requirements, storage requirements, takes an action, right? Those are the things that help us and kind of makes us kind of stand out on some of the things we do uh, in terms of yeah. technology with storage specific. Okay, so yeah, it, it it, it just, just a quick follow up yeah. on that. If, if I'm a customer and I, you know, I love VMware and I'm running vSphere, yeah. but let's say today I don't buy vSAN, yeah. can I still participate in all of this? Can things like interclouding, uh, you know, how, how can I, you know, do I have to buy all VMware, or you know, what flexibility and choice is there? Yeah. Uh, so um, if you think about uh, uh, vSAN, as excited as we are about the momentum and we continue to see, see you know, this big tidal wave coming at us, um, you know, 5,000 customers, that's really just 1% of VMware's customer base. So clearly, we still have vast workload and customer bases that is on the traditional form of storage where we're trying to help them modernize with VVOL. And so, like Rollinson said, a lot of our value add is really in the management layer. And that does not have to depend on the storage um, underneath. So a lot of those capabilities will be able to be leverageable to those customers. Is the growth rate uh, surprising you that it's not growing faster? I mean, you're doing what, 100 customers a week? I mean, that's pretty phenomenal. I mean, that's, I mean, it sounds like you have a lot of growth. I mean, only 1% of the in just install base. Yeah. And so, yeah. you're looking to put the pedal to the metal coming up, <laughs> or are we expecting to I mean, see some growth? I think, I think yeah. we, got, we have a you know, pedal to the, all the way down to the floor. I think yeah. the challenge is that we have something that is very unique, and it changes not just the technology, it's the operational yeah. impact mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a data center and for a customer. Yeah. When you have to adopt this new model of operating functions, it's very different to just shift immediately to that and then kind of leave the other one, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm very excited about you know, the, the gross potential, um, and I think even though we're uh, starting to see this acceleration several months ago, I do think it continues. You know, certainly HCI, even through you guys' research, you recognize this is by far the fastest growth yep. storage market. And um, we feel vSAN is positioned really well given how we're integrated with vSphere, you know, how you know, VMware's broad ecosystem and customer base support us. So, a lot to look forward to. Yeah, and, and just to, to give our audience a little bit of quantification on that, that's over 100% year-over-year growth for the industry, and of course, vSAN, we, we added at 155% just for your product line, so congratulations on that. And, Thank uh, you, Stu. Yeah. Great the research, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So what's next? So, you guys are pedal to the metal right now, pedaling as fast as you can, if you want to use that analogy. I mean, there's a lot of action going on in the software-defined mm -hmm. data center, as mm -hmm. it's been called. Um, this seems to be fruit that's coming off that tree, if you will, for that, that kind of policy automation. I mean, that's basically DevOps kind of mindset. That is what people are looking for, that kind of scale. Yeah. We're going to see more automation, and we're going to, how's this policy thing going to evolve? Where's this going to end up going? Obviously, the growth is there and there's demand. Where's the functionality going to take, where's the yeah. VSAN going to go? I think there are you know, multi-layers of technology that we're working on. You know, still, at the core of the storage data pass, you know, things like encryption, or you know, how we keep up 
the innovation with the, all the greatest hardware innovation, you know, that curve of, uh, you know, um, IOPS and uh, performance improvement, you know, the next generation NVM uh, hardware is going to bring. So there is continued vibrant innovation at the data layer. Now at the management layer, we talk about policy, intelligence, analytics. Then you go up to the service layer, think about data management and all the cross-cloud services. So, you know, our engineering is quite busy working yeah. across the stack. Um, yeah, I think we have a lot to do and a lot to look forward to. And Michael Dell feels comfortable with you guys' growth and he's happy with the performance. Now they've got a date uh -huh. September 7th is the big close of the transaction. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> Michael is following all the storage people on Twitter. He's coming and to the party. He's coming to the party. He's come to our HCI Zoom, where you know, he really interacted, not just with the team, also with the customers. And especially, I appreciate Michael's commitment to the open ecosystem. Because in the HCI Zoom, we have the HP, the Lenovo, the Cisco, um, and he spent time with all of them. So that commitment to maintaining this independent open system for VMware yeah. is extremely important for the success of vSAN because our ambition is to address all use cases that vSphere addressed today, yeah. not limited to what Dell or EMC is about. Yeah, and that's the big positive message. Yeah, John, I mentioned this morning, I was talking to a customer who was mm -hmm. uh, you know, sorting out what he was going to do for Hyperconverge, and he got a call from, he didn't know who from Texas, and there's Michael Dell saying, I want you to feel comfortable with Dell and what you're buying from the HCI marketplace wow. there. So, uh, you know, pretty de definitely uh, you know, top of mind for Michael, one of the key synergies for kind of yeah. Dell buying EMC and, and VMware uh, you know, control as part of that. Yeah. Yanping, thank you for coming on theCUBE again. Great to see you back. Ronaldson, thanks for sharing uh, the news with the party and also the great uh, knowledge and, and success you're having at the, at the technical level in the stack. Congratulations. And, and again, simplifying things is always a good business model. You know? So, congratulations. Well, thank you, John. Thank you, Stu. You guys make tech so sexy and interesting. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. We're at theCUBE here live at uh, Mandalay Bay in the hang space at VMworld 2016. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE.